Horizon just home series reaction. This is how bad maps win election. Gerrymandering explained by Shell J Foreman. Yes, it's a J Foreman map man. I guess that is the only segment they do now. I'm pretty sure they did more than just map man. But yeah, this is like specialty. It's fun. Uh, I've been watching J Foreman video for the past multiple years. It's fun. They're British, I think. And they're way it's like uh, very unique in a way it's fun right uh, i'm pretty sure this is a channel where i realize that there is a land that nobody wants to claim uh, in middle east so like somebody claimed it which feels weird to me even though nobody claims nobody denies it either because that would be issue in itself so it's either or belong to those two countries you can't just claim it it's not you know it's it's, it's not openly okay this land belongs to no one type of shit but yeah this is weird so this is gonna be about gerrymandering as far as i remember like one of the john oliver video i think i don't know i don't exactly remember but yeah it's basically uh, you know people like knowing which type of people vote which way i guess you have to register there that's weird right i'm pretty sure you have to register democrat or register republican like why isn't that a problem in itself I, I don't know how all that shit works, right? Like, people say, like, you shouldn't ask somebody who, who they're going to vote for. And at the same time, you can register as well. Like, that's like giving it away. So I'm pretty sure gerrymandering works like that. Like, you you mold a place the way you want. So you win election, which is, like, fucked up. But it's going to be an interesting video in more depth. Let's go this one. Can we do an episode about politics? No! All right, what if it's about politics in a foreign country? Oh, that sounds fun. Great, welcome to Map Men. We're the men, and here's the map. Map Men, Map Men, Map, Map, Map Men, Men. This is a map of the 435 districts. I like how basically they just went like, okay, we don't want to touch British politics. What is more easier? Well, let's go to American politics. Yeah, that works. <laughs> that the USA is split into for the purposes of voting for members of Congress, the powerful people who pick the policies the president can pass. Because elections have to be fair, it's important that the map is fair. That's why every 10 years the boundaries get redrawn to make sure every district always contains, as closely as possible, the same number of people, about 700,000. Which means that this map is actually a very handy way of glancing at population density across the United States. For example, sparsely populated Wyoming has just one district and just one representative. Hello. And densely populated New York has 26. Hello. 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 That makes sense, but if you zoom in, some of it doesn't make sense. Lots of districts have very suspicious looking shapes. Burr? Gur? Fnur? Do districts really have to be so fnur just to get the populations equal? Nope, there's something more sinister going on. And to find out what it is, we have to go back to 1812. Where are we? We're still in England, but it's 1812. Shouldn't we be in Boston? The story starts in Boston, in the office of the governor of Massachusetts, Elbridge Gerry. With a gur. With a gur. There was an election coming up, and it looked like Gerry was about to lose his job. But his advisors came up with a bill that could practically guarantee a victory for their party without having to win any extra votes. All they had to do was change the map. But how does changing the map change the results? That's what Elbridge Gerry said. How does changing the map change the results? Allow us to demonstrate with the use of state-of-the-art graphics. Let's say there's a hypothetical rectangular state with two parties, the Chocolate Raisin Party and the Smarty Party. The Smarty Party is more popular, obviously. A fair result that you'd expect is three Smarty Districts and two Chocolate Raisin Districts. But watch what happens if someone from the Smarty Party is in charge of drawing the map. They can make it so that Smarties control every district. Smarty indeed. But, more sneakily, watch what happens if someone from the Chocolate Raisin Party is in charge of drawing the map. They can mathematically make three Chocolate Raisin Districts and just two Smarty, even though there are more Smarties. Disgusting, shrivelly things. But Massachusetts wasn't a perfect rectangle with voters arranged into unrealistically neat rows. Wyoming is. In order to achieve their desired results on a real map of thousands of human voters, Gary's team would have to draw their boundaries using two techniques, packing and cracking. Cracking is when you break up a community of opposition voters and dissolve them into surrounding districts, making their votes powerless. A bit like giving all your dinner guests a tiny bit of vodka in every part of the meal spread across the evening, so everyone gets very, very slightly, barely detectably drunk. And packing is when you do the opposite, and pack as many opposition supporters as possible into just one district, making their votes wasted. A bit like giving all of your vodka to just one of your dinner guests, keeping everyone else completely sober except Uncle Steve. Once the concept was finally explained to Elbridge Gerry, he said he didn't like it and thought it was... Highly disagreeable. But he signed the bill anyway like a coward and history was made. 
Gary's team looked at a map of <laughs> all of them. So he didn't like it, and yet it's named after him. Is it Gary Mendering or Jerry Mendering? I thought it was Jerry Mendering. I don't know. Where well, this is like, I guess when you think about it, sure it makes sense. But I'm surprised sooner or later people didn't come up across like, okay, well, let's make a law that nobody can change places like that, right? So nobody can gerrymander. But then again, why would do people who would do that are the one who's doing gerrymandering? So why would they do something like that? So it would be never be solved, I guess. Why would people who's in charge, who did the gerrymandering in the first place, would actually agree to stop gerrymandering? ...of where their supporters lived. And after a heavy night of packing and cracking, this is what they came up with, including this improbably bendy, sort of lizard-shaped district. The new map caused quite a stir and caught the attention of political cartoonist Elkanah Tisdale and his editor Nathan Hale at the Boston Gazette. Hey, have you seen Governor Gary's new district map? Yeah, looks like a salamander. Ha, <laughs> you mean a Gary-mander? <laughs> and that's how the process of manipulating maps for political gain became known as gerrymandering. And then everyone started pronouncing it wrong. Which is how it became known as gerrymandering, which was good news for Gary, who'd probably be delighted that his name hasn't technically gone down in history for this bad thing. Which brings us back to the present day. Anyway, in a proper democracy, such obvious cheating would have been instantly spotted and nipped in the bud. But due to America's quirky, stunningly undemocratic system, where it's politicians themselves who draw their own district maps, gerrymandering, gerrymandering, very much continues. So the joke be him, him looking at the watch for 2024 because it's a time thing rather than anything. To this day. And it's more sophisticated, high-tech and openly brazen than ever before or anywhere else in the world. It can be seen in swing states all across America. A shower head, a car with wings, one of those old-fashioned hand drill things, a dinosaur, a watering can, the shape on the flag of the Isle of Man, a metal detector, a bale of hay, a knight sitting on his horse the wrong way, a rabbit in a hat, and a bobbit and a spoon. Super circus. I like how creative our mind is, right? Like, you see a cloud and you don't see anything, but then your friend comes along and says, isn't that a giraffe? And they will really look at it. Oh, wait a minute, that is a giraffe. That's the shit happening right now. Seahorse Cameroon, a plume of steam from a mug of tea, Donald Duck being kicked by Goofy, a carpet stain from a naughty pup, a mouse leaning over with a big thumbs up, snake dog, bat dog, snake duck, snake, we'll be right back after the break. Hello, is this the travel agents? Yes, we are still a thing. <laughs> Bonkers. I'd like a round-the-world trip, please. Ah, you want to see such famous sights as the Taj Mahal, the Pyramids of Giza, and the Belgian boy doing a wee? Better than that, I want to go to Edmonton to watch Spider-Man No Way Home on Canadian Netflix, which isn't available in the UK. Then I want to go to Aberdeen to watch 24 Hours in Tesco on UK Netflix, which isn't available in Canada. Then I want to go to Baden-Baden in Germany to get a discount not available in the UK on flights to Baden-Baden. But didn't you know you can simply achieve all this with Surfshark VPN, an app and browser extension that makes your browser think it's in another country, bypassing your own country's restrictions? allowing you to view streaming services and discounts that aren't available in your country, such as Canadian Netflix from a British computer or Belgian Amazon Prime from a Namibian computer and so on, as well as providing security benefits by masking your IP address and encrypting your data, preventing you from being tracked by advertisers and hackers, all with just one account on an unlimited number of devices, available with a special deal for viewers of MapMen who can click the link in the description or scan this QR code and use the code MAPMEN to get an extra four months for free. Yes, I'm well aware of Surfshark. I've seen 12 adverts for it on this channel alone, and frankly, I'm getting sick of it. Well, what would you rather see an advert for? Uh, crisps. All right, here you go. Whether you're sharing a picnic with your family, or you want to give your lunch that extra crunch, or you're settling down to watch television with a friend with benefits, there's nothing quite like crisps. Happy now? Yes, thank you. I quite like that. Still want that round the world trip? Nah, I'm just going to buy some crisps. Oh, and Surfshark. People won't be pissed off. The Substack one, like, why did you just like fucking oh, get get onto it, get onto it? Like, why did you just say all everything in one breath? Thank you. Well, that was fun. But gerrymandering, gerrymandering. Everyone says gerrymandering. Everyone's wrong. Gerrymandering has serious consequences. North Carolina. In the 2018 midterm elections, Republicans won 10 out of 13 seats with just 51% of the votes. Ohio. Republicans won 12 out of 16 seats with just 52% of the votes. And the Democrat Party does it too. Mar I Lorned. Democrats won 7 out of 8 seats with just 63% of the votes. So then, why don't they just make squiggly districts illegal? Oh, if only it were that simple. Sometimes, a district that looks sillily squiggly has been made squiggly for a good reason. 
Republican voters and Democrat voters tend to clump together with their own kind, with Republicans mostly in the countryside and Democrats mostly in big cities. This is called self-sorting, and it's only getting more extreme. The problem with self-sorting is, if your district has no opposition in it, your politician won't have to work hard, and you won't have to bother to vote. And so, to encourage healthy, competitive elections... You know what surprises me? Why is city dwellers that are Democrat and others are not? Democrats usually are more like socialist leaning, for you can say. It's not really socialist, but you can say it like that, right? Who wants to tax the rich? Rich are in the city. So rich people want to tax themselves. Okay, and the Republicans who are not as rich, apparently, because they live in countryside, have a problem with that. Won't they be the one get more benefits? Like, okay, let's tax those New Yorkers or whatever. They, 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 no, like, I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that whole thing, right? Those flyover countries, people say flyover because people just want to go to from New York to Los Angeles or shit like that, right? So why are they opposed to this kind of a taxation? I'm guessing they're not really opposed to this, but the people who are in charge, that they put it in charge, probably gets lobbying money from these rich people and just like, ah, oh, no, 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 trickle down economics, shouldn't tax the rich, this and that, and just like confuses people where people are like, yeah, that's right, shouldn't tax it, what if I start a company tomorrow and it becomes Amazon, it's, it's not gonna happen. It's basically shit like that, I'm guessing. Legislators make districts squiggly on purpose, encouraging politicians to broaden their appeal and prevent politics from being polarized. Competitiveness is not the only good reason for bonkers-looking map squiggles. Take a look at Illinois. In central Chicago, you'll find the famous Earmus district, Illinois 4th, which wraps around the 7th, barely holding itself together with the I-294 highway. Both the 4th and 7th districts are solid Democrat, so why in the name of all that jazz were they split this way? Members of Congress don't just make up numbers for their party. Each one is supposed to represent their community. A so-called community of interest can mean people from a certain industry, or housing type, or education, or... Uh, that, uh, yes, both all three of them are Democrat, but there's a reason why all th three of them are Democrat, because save for a different, the majority would change in probably two of them, rather than all. Now, this way, all three of them are like, let's say one is 55%, another is 54%, other is like 59%. Only reason that happened is because of that kind of gerrymandering. If they change that, they might lose majority in all of them. Who the fuck knows? Race. For decades in America, minorities were terribly underrepresented in Congress. After much campaigning, in 1965, the Voting Rights Act was passed, which made it illegal for any state to do anything that made it difficult for minorities to get elected. Which included drawing voting districts that broke up minority communities. What this practically means is, every state is now required to pack voters of the same race into fewer districts. No one wants it to be necessary, but it's the only way to make Congress reflect America's true diversity instead of its true racism. Which explains this. This is a mostly African-American community, and these are two mostly Latino communities. So immediately we can see the problem. You can make districts compact, or you can make them competitive, or you can make them keep a community. But you can't make them all three. That's what makes fixing gerrymandering so hard. No one can agree on which is the most important C. Which is why all attempts over the last few decades at fixing gerrymandering have produced various amounts of not much success. Including, most notably, in California, with the strong support of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, it's time to say, hasta la vista to uh, gerrymandering. <laughs> but in almost every case, any attempt to... Yeah, screw your freedom guy, basically. I understand his take, but still, that's a very weird thing for a politician to say. He should have known better. Right, how are you governor of a state, former governor of a state, and don't know how to do politics right? Right, he's like, screw your freedom, take your vaccine shot or whatever, and people just cling on to that. He shouldn't have said that. But yeah, I guess gerrymandering is hard when you have to like look at many other elements of things, right? You have to, uh, basically, if you're a very diverse place, how are you going to like manage anything? So problems like that is always going to exist. Fix it has only made things worse, serving only to highlight how impossible it is to make everybody happy. Since we're not in America, it's easy for us as outsiders, living in a country whose democracy is practically perfect in every way, to tell Americans how they should run theirs. So, just in time for the next round of redistricting in 2031, here are Matman's top tips for how the USA can fix gerrymandering. 1. Instead of giving districts boring numbers, make legislators give them actual names. The longer the name, the harder the shape will be to justify. 2. Get computers to draw your districts for you. 
AI is a powerful tool these days. You think politicians care about the naming scheme? They won't care if the name run out of the paper. Basically, basically they have to write on the walls. They don't care. It's all technical shit. They don't care, right? These are the same people who do that shit. What is it called? Uh, where they just speak in Congress for hours and hours, multiple days even, just to delay some shit. And they'll basically read like bedtime stories if they have to, but they just keep speaking. You think these are the people who have a problem with like longer names? And the robots know what's best for us. Three, abolish geographical districts and divide the country by communities of internet. The people who share your priorities that need representing in government are all across the country and not just physically close to you. Four, increase the number of members of Congress from 435 to 435,000, so each district contains just one street. You can't say it wouldn't work. And five, stop worrying about democracy. <laughs> I think they get, stop giving a shit with those two, uh, two problem-solving ideas. Yeah, just like internet groups. There you go, 435,000 seats. There you go. Uh, how long is the parliament? I guess the size of the Washington DC, I don't know. Democracy, and just let a dictator take over. Before we start blaming America's politicians for cheating at democracy, it's important to remember gerrymandering is only possible because voters are predictable. You can't draw lines around how people are going to vote if you don't know how they're going to vote. Today more than ever before, people support political parties like football teams and are less likely to ever allow their minds to be changed. I blame Twitter. And the more this happens, the harder it is to draw anything apart from depressingly predictable districts. In the last election, 81% of Americans lived in districts where it was extremely obvious who was going to win, leaving it to just a tiny handful of swing voters to decide the result for the whole country. It's impossible to draw a map that will make everybody happy, but fighting for fairness is worth the faff. If voters can at least feel their voices being heard, they'll be encouraged to turn up and vote, and to vote for their real favourite, making democracy more meaningful. Until then, the American political system will remain an antiquated basket case that enables those with power to rig the system for themselves and block any meaningful progress for the foreseeable future. Glad we don't live in a country like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, British politics is perfect. What you're talking about, right? Uh, which country's politics is actually working? Like, I don't even know that, right? Yeah, I don't know, man. Right? Yeah, freedom, freedom will have this kind of an issues in the first place because you have good element and bad element. Bad elements will show up. That's how it works, I guess. Yeah, democracy is slow. Democracy has problem, but there you go. That's how it works. You can't have everything. Right, you you want freedom, great, but you're gonna have problems. Fine, there you go. Deal with the problems, then I don't know. So yeah, <sighs> gerrymandering. There's nothing to solve there, right? <laughs> it would not work. But yeah, right. Well, that was how bad maps with election uh, gerrymandering explain how bad maps with election. That's not even a question. Okay, this is my channel, Jay Foreman. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.